Hey, Steve Soretsky here. Uh, this is the Friday recap video where every week I come to you and basically recap everything that's happening in Vancouver real estate and basically looking at, you know, the economy, Canadian real estate as a whole in general, tying it all together, anything that sort of might have some relevance on uh, on really Canadian real estate and with a primary focus on Vancouver. So uh, again, every Friday, if you're enjoying these videos, um, you know, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, comment below obviously want to engage with you guys as well so um yeah i just gonna d dive into it again there's always most of everything that i talk about there's gonna be links below that's gonna basically link back with all the charts and data on my website that's at vancitycondoguide.com uh, again also engagement wise even content wise i put most of my stuff out on twitter so we're you know working on my following there um you know it's probably most probably the best platform for me to engage on like on a one-on-one -on -one basis so if you want to if you're on twitter follow me at steve soretsky and uh yeah i mean basically this has been sort of the, the growing trend over really the last four to six months where you have you know higher end luxury homes that are, are really starting to slow and that's primarily you know from the market tiring itself you have the chinese capital controls or if you look at really uh, luxury markets across the globe in these global cities all these high-end luxury homes are all all those markets are all starting to sag now and that's because you really have these these tightenings uh, from these channel capital flows basically uh, you know the PBOC the uh, People's Bank of China is recapitalizing their banking structure you know they've had this excessive credit growth and uh, you know they have to basically rein in some of that credit and so they're basically trying to keep money inside and beef up their banking reserves etc um, so we've seen that slowdown in the high end of these markets and what's happening is basically um, you know for various reasons is it's ignited the lower end condo market where maybe people think like this is a temporary break on the foreign money coming in uh, you obviously had the Christie Clark subprime loan, but basically everyone that's trying to get in right now, like the primary drivers of the market, everything that's pushing things forward is first time buyers and basically people looking at secondary and third investment properties that have already built up equity over the last year or so, you know, made a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars in equity that are basically essentially drawing that out and investing it into investment properties. Uh, you hear a lot of stories. Uh, where people, mom and dad are coming in, you know, the son and daughter at university or whatever, so they plan to buy it, rent it out for a couple of years, and that's sort of going to be like the kids' uh, home in the future. So that's that's really what we're seeing right now. Uh, but basically, what's happening is because that's mostly all local, is you have everybody that's bidding up one bedroom condos. So like the the most competitive segment with with like without a doubt is the one bedroom condo market segment because everybody's just trying to get in that's like that threshold for the vast majority of people in the lower mainland so not only vancouver but if you want to go you know as people get priced out of vancouver as a one bedroom hits 1100 1200 a square foot you have people that push out into areas like new west uh surrey and so those these are the top three uh, you know, put out a post, I'm going to link to that in below, but put out a post basically highlighting the top three on a year over year basis. If you really look at the last couple months, uh, new West condos, and this is for the most part, this tends to exclude pre-sale condos assignments because those aren't heavily marketed on the MLS. Um, but the average price per square foot, the average price per square foot, or sorry, not the average price per square foot, the average sales price, the average sales price for one bedroom unit in New Westminster is up year over year 46%. Um, so again, if you took sort of June, it's 46, July, it's something around 40. But if you look at it on a year over year date, it's about 46% right now. Same, same sort of metric if you take the average price per square foot, I think it's actually even higher. Um, so some of that is a little bit diluted very minimally from, from new developments driving up prices, but changing that number but for the most part you look at new west that one bedroom segment uh the average sales price is up 46 percent i think and that's for the one bedroom segment i'm not talking about two bedrooms and three bedrooms I'm talking about where is the most competition 
Uh, so you take that and then I go into, okay, let's go into North Surrey, the Wally area. Uh, again, SkyTrain, a lot of younger people moving out there for affordability. Uh, that's up 45% on an average sales price for a one bedroom unit. The average sales price is up 45%. Uh, and then I think the third highest, third highest area where there's actually enough volume to say, okay, I can quantify something out of this was Burnaby. So one bedrooms in Burnaby are uh, up 28, 28% on a year over year basis. So again, uh, you know, take those numbers with a very slight grain of salt. It doesn't mean the exact same condo is up 46% versus the year, but it's very, very close. And this is where the largest price gains are happening right now. Uh, I mean, again, 46%, 45%, and 28%, uh, extremely, extremely unhealthy numbers. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that definitely concerns me and why I do, I don't make any predictions, but this is one of the sense where I think, I believe in my own philosophy that there has to be some sort of pullback when you have 40% price growth on a year over year basis. Um, and again, I look at areas where New West, New West, you know, North Surrey, maybe not so much Burnaby, but those are areas that are not heavily influenced by foreign capital coming in. Like that's those one bedroom segment. That's a lot of locals just driving prices up. Um, and you can see it with the new development that I was talking a couple weeks ago about how pre-sale developments, uh, in new west or buildings that have recently just completed that are you know just hitting the market or are asking 900 a square foot of course that was the price that you were paying for a downtown vancouver condo only a year ago uh so you know some of these some of these prices again when you have that much growth in prices and then you have to factor in that really incomes are, are very close to flat so that's all credit it's all excess credit um, of course, you had the BIS coming out in warning. I think Canada's number third, number three on the radar in terms of excessive credit growth over the years. So we know it's an issue. I'm just, I, you worry with that, okay, with interest rates going up, et cetera. How does this all play out? Now, I don't know. I don't make any predictions because I can't, it's impossible. I'm not going to put my, put my name on the line and say that. But these are the sort of the numbers that you look for in the market. Okay, what's driving it? Uh, it was obviously the general belief that can, prices will continue to increase. Um and I think just to add to that, you know, I was involved in a, in a multiple offer the other day in in in, uh, in the Wally area. And so this is why I have these numbers because I am doing some business out there where I have to keep track of it and keeping a close eye on what's going on. Obviously, you know, the bank room market much better. But um, what happens is it, it's kind of a double-edged sword because... You have realtors, okay, so you look at, you you know, you're advising your clients, say, okay, hey, listen, you know, this, here's the place, uh, the, the, the realtor's telling us there's five offers on it, we've got to put our best foot forward if you want it. Uh, the recent comparables are selling at $400 a square foot, um, but because you really want this place, because there's five other offers, and the market continues to increase on a monthly basis, um, everyone is going to basically offer more, a little bit, a slightly higher than the last comparable. And so, you know, a couple months ago where it was selling for 350 and the next one sells for 360 and then 380 and then you go to 400 and so now it's like, okay, hey, I think you should offer 410. And so then I lose, like, you know, my buyer will lose and say they lose out at 410. I'm like, yeah, you know what? You gave your best shot. I really think that's all the unit's worth. You lose out at 410, but because it's a system where like, you know, obviously the realtor wants to make money. So they're like, oh yeah, you should pay 430 a square foot. Uh, so it's a very fine line where like it's a system that again it's motivated so advising your clients and I always just tell mine like you know what this is what it's worth um, if you're willing to pay this go for it but this is what I think it's worth uh, but this is the problem too is when you have this sort of structure that's set up is it's not only the buyer that really wants to place they're running on emotions you also have that from a realtor perspective, you know, you're competing four or five offers. Everyone you're going into is competition. Like nobody just wants to keep writing offers. So I think that they're continuing to look at the last comparable sale and they're saying, ah, oh, bid up, bid up slightly more than that last comparable. And then it just, it's just, it's just like a, it's a very vicious cycle, very vicious loop. Um, you know, and then sort of switching gears. I mean, again, this is all just all comes back to, and then these prices continue to, 
continue to ramp up. Uh, just another thing I'm looking at that I noticed is the Bank of Canada's inflation target, the the CPI, which is basically their inflation measurement for uh, housing costs, hit 3%. So what they're basically saying is for the typical Vancouverite, housing costs, housing shelter costs are up 3% on a year-over-year -year basis. Uh, and so you can see, like, if you go and just ask the average Vancouver, right, like, what, how are you experiencing with housing? The vast majority will tell you that shelter costs are up much more than 3% year over year. And that's a problem with these models is they're creating, like, because these models are so outdated, uh, they're creating a, these massive wealth inequalities and, and and just it's forming terrible monetary policy where you've kept interest rates suppressed over the last really decade at uh, emergency interest rates uh, because they're saying, oh, we can't hit inflation, we can't hit inflation. But you have all this inflation, it's going into shelter, it's going into housing. Uh, but here you are, you're saying it's 3% on a year over year basis. So I look at it, I think the average one bedroom rent uh, is up about 13% on a year over year basis. Uh, I think two bedrooms are up around 11%. So the rents are definitely way up. And then you look at areas, you know, Vancouver condos are up about 20%. But as I was just telling you, for like a one bedroom unit in New West, Wally, like it's hovering around 40% right now, Burnaby 28. So you can't tell me, they're just using these metrics that, you know, aren't, aren't reality. And so they're forming the, these policies based on this broken metric. And you know, this is just, like I said. This is just creating this this wealth inequality, um, where you're leaving these rates suppressed, and everything is just getting driven up with inflation. And wages are basically stagnant, and this is what creates this sort of like populist movement. Uh, you can see all these housing groups obviously coming out, not only in Vancouver, Toronto, but really across the globe, calling for affordable housing, density, no density, etc. And, uh, you know, shelter has really been like the biggest political agenda for for so many governments, etc. And uh, just to, to look at it, right, I'm putting this all into context for you, is uh, someone shared this on, on, on uh, Twitter the other day saying there was a, someone, I think one of the mayors that's running for Vancouver, Swanson or something created a Facebook event or, or some sort of activist group and they and the event is titled what's it titled uh, rally rally for a mansion tax in Vancouver and it says tax tax the rich to help the rest of us tax the rich to help the rest of us uh, and this is what's going to happen right so there's there you're creating this wealth divide where it's basically there's there is almost no middle class you have the rich you have the poor people that own financial assets real estate stocks and people that don't uh and there's just this because all the money is going into financial assets when you have central banks that have tr printed i believe uh, something we're somewhere close to 20 trillion dollars since the financial crisis all that money has basically flowed into financial assets creating wealthier people the rich are getting richer uh, but there's this belief really that instead of coming after the central banks that have created its policy and governments that haven't really haven't done their job, uh, they're going after the rich and saying, oh, the rich haven't paid their fair share. Uh, and of course, now you have the Canadian government as opposed to actually going after real estate tax avoidance. I mean, obviously in Vancouver, there's massive tax avoidance uh, speculative investments, assignments, flipping contracts, uh, you know, people aren't paying capital gains tax. We know that's happening. Uh, CRA has obviously taken some of the developers to court to get their list to see who's flipping. Um, but instead of going after them, now the government's going after here small businesses. They're going to charge a 73% tax on passive investments, uh, which is just like an all out assault. And of course, like, I mean, small businesses, medium businesses essentially run the Canadian economy. Um, so, and then now they're going to basically tax the hell out of them as opposed to going after really like we have a lot of tax evasion in, in real estate. Um, but instead, you know, you, again, you have these groups that think it's like the, the rich that aren't paying their fair share. So like the, the answer is like bigger government, just keep taxing people, taxing people, just 
basically tax taxing is like the solution uh, to the problems that they haven't actually looked at governments and what has government done, how is their spending, uh, and then obviously, of course, central bank policy. So I know it's a bit of a ramble, uh, you know, just my observations of what's happening. Again, you can, I mean, just take a look around. It doesn't really take like an analytical perspective to see what's going on is that, you know, wages again are basically stagnant. Housing prices continue to increase, whether you're buying or selling or renting. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Uh, all I got for this week, I'm gonna quickly touch on one last thing before I let this end this video. Um, some of the articles out there, obviously, in the mainstream circulating, I think Sotheby's put one out. Uh, I had to call BS on, but this is the this is the sort of dangerous stuff that that can sort of happen uh, to prop these markets to keep them going and to push prices up. Um, you know, Sotheby's was coming out and saying that the all the foreign buyers are now moving to to Montreal. They're now driving up luxury prices in Montreal. Prices are booming. It's going to be the next big thing. And like, I don't know if they're trying to stir up like a local fear of missing out in Montreal and, and shift the market from what Vancouver now to Toronto. And they're going to try to shift it to Toronto, but that's simply not true. Uh, sales above 1 million on a year over year basis went from like 59 sales to 63 so there's like virtually no increase in luxury sales in montreal uh the benchmark price in montreal is up four percent year over year four percent so it's like just slightly above inflation uh, but again they're trying to sort of skew this and then they were also trying to say that there's a resurgence uh in the vancouver luxury market they were saying in july and august that uh Sales had increased, of course, they were then comparing it. I mean, we have to remember that August 2016 was the year they brought in a foreign buyer's tax last year, which cut sales by 50%. Uh, so, of course, naturally, this year, sales should pick up on a month. When you're comparing one month versus a month last year, of course, they're naturally going to pick up. But if you actually look at it on a year-over-year -year basis, you take January to August, um, the home sales in Vancouver above 1 million. So from January of this year to August of this year, comparing to last year's January to August. So you have a good eight month window there. Uh, home sales above $1 million in Vancouver are down this year, 18%. Uh, and that's in, that you yeah, also have to factor in that the condo prices which continue to drive up now you have a lot of condos costing over a million dollars especially if you're looking at two bedrooms and three bedrooms uh so even despite those prices ticking upwards that's the amount of sales has actually declined on on a year to date basis uh so the whole context that the luxury market is heating up is just completely false uh the west side of vancouver's detached market has a sales to active ratio of six percent that's well 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 below a buyer's market um, so there's no indications that the market is, is the luxury market is heating up. Like I said, the, the entry level one bedroom, that stuff is still going crazy. Uh, but the, that detached market just in general, even if it, whether it's luxury or not, it is quite soft. So, uh, that's all I got for this week. Uh, again, I'm going to try to keep it to this once a week Friday video. So check back in here Friday. If I have any sort of interesting tidbits that just can't wait till Friday, I'll obviously post a video before that, but uh, trying to keep it to a regular once a week schedule on Friday. Uh, if you don't like that, like it. Obviously, you can still take your comments below. All right. I hope that helped, and I'll talk to you soon.